My name is Jacob Malmo. I'm a uh, veterinary practitioner and I've practiced in the McAllister irrigation area for around 50 years. Um, over that time I've developed an interest in a number of subjects, one of which is lameness, which is becoming a major issue on many dairy farms, not only in this area, but throughout Australia. Um, I'm also a dairy farm owner and the farm we're shooting this on today is one of my dairy farms. We may have an opportunity to show you several of the measures we've put in place to try and reduce the incidence of lameness. One of the areas you were interested in was what type of lameness are we seeing? Over the last um, 18 months, I've been keeping a record of virtually every lame cow that I see in the practice. While these might be a little different to what farmers generally see, it'll give a very good indication. And looking at my records, there are a whole range of factors causing lameness, but 84% of them can be explained by simply four conditions. Those four conditions are white line disease, the sole penetration with pus under the sole or a sole abscess, that's two, uh, a crack in the axial wall, an axial wall crack is three, and less common, because farmers would treat more of them themselves, is foot rot. Okay, now we have the cow restrained in the bale. We have a belly strap underneath her. We have a pulley system in place. I reach down and place a strap around the cow's foot, just above the hock. When you're bending down, you make sure you keep your head above the level of the cow's stifle. You're in close to the cow, so if she does kick, she might bruise you a little, but she won't break you. Once we've got that strap attached to the hock, we pull out, put our pulley attachment to it and lift the cow's foot up. With a separate rope, we then place that above the fetlock of the cow's foot, place that around an upright bar, as you'll see, hold that tight, and now we have the foot restrained. You can either wash this with a bucket of water or simply use your knife and just take a thin sliver of horn off and when you do that here, in this particular case, you can see a separation. There's a separation occurring here. This is the typical site of a thing called white line disease. Separation is occurring here. And you see, as I cut it back, it's breaking out here at the heel. This is broken out here. And that is a mild one. What I'm going to do is lift up her other foot. She may have this similar condition, but more severe on the other foot. I'll trim it up and then possibly put a wooden block, blue wooden block, on the other side to lift this affected claw off the ground. Uh, this relieves her pain and greatly hastens the healing process. Okay, so again we clean up this foot, but in this case we have this white line here which will likely be causing problem. We have separation all along this side, any one of which could lead to pus under the sole. See, you see the, the stone, there's a couple of stones, even though I've dug that much out, there's a stone in there, and I wouldn't like that in my shoe. Now, we have here, even though we only have a small mark there, a black line going up the side of the sole and it's broken out here at the top. So, see the black line is on. So, see how that is all pussy around there? Came from that very small mark and it under and ran right back there. So I'll make her feel a lot better now by taking some weight off this heel, number one, and then by putting a wooden block on the other side to get the weight off the foot.
right. Okay, there you go. That's fine. Always wear gloves because it is glue can be fairly irritant. So what we've done now is put this wooden block on the sound foot off the ground and will give immediate pain relief. The block will wear off over a period of three or four weeks. No need for antibiotic injection with a cow like this, simply a bit of anti, 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 antibiotic spray and the farmer can apply that each milking for a couple of days. That is now nearly hard, we've got another minute is now hard enough to be put down. She can stand on that now. She's good. Sorry, Dave. Oh. We're good. We're good. We're good. I thought I would also show you very quickly how to lift up a front foot. Keeping your head above the level of the stifle. Wrap it around the bar. Yep. Wrap it around again. Face forward, the front of the cow. Then if something breaks or something goes wrong, she'll kick me in the bum. Whereas if I turn around the other way and she kicks in the face, that's painful. And I'm saying that's how people get badly hurt. So face forward. Strap below the, below the knee, attach it to my pulley. You can do it, girl. Yeah. So now I've got the foot held up. We can put a strap around there and just place the rope over the bar and restrain her even better, like so. By having this rope system as is, we can, even a one person operation, can lift up, check between the toes, uh, and then have someone hold that and use a hoof knife to work on that hoof if you want to. Safe and convenient. Looking at this track, um, there are a couple of points I would make about it. It is a good wide track. The bearing surface is very stable. It has been crushed down using a vibrating roller. It has very few sharp stones on it and is very kind on cow's feet. When you look at the track further, it has a gentle camber, enough to allow the water to drain off. Cows over time push material to the edge of the track and every so often we dig some you know, drains in the side of the track to drain away excess water. Another important issue, a critical issue about building tracks. I was speaking at a meeting in the Western District and an engineer was also speaking at that same meeting. He spoke about building tracks. He said there were three very important parts about building a track. The three parts being drainage, and then drainage, and then drainage. If you can't get water off the track, the cows will make mud in no time and destroy the track. So always when designing a track, the first thing you do is establish a good drainage system. This track, after a couple of days of rain, is very good for the cows to move down again. We think this is an example of a fairly good track which you can have close to the dairy, the best, because that's where the most traffic is. So we've spent a fair bit of money on this track, making sure it will stand up under most weather conditions. We have described our method of restraining a cow, examining the cow, and we'll discuss methods of treating some of these conditions. A couple of important things though. Farmers should learn to record every case of lameness that they treat or their veterinarian treats so that you know how many cases are occurring on your farm. But the absolute key to lameness is putting in places to reduce or prevent lameness, at least reduce the incidence on any farm. These can be broken down into a, just a, two or three key areas. The first is patience. As you bring the cows up from the paddock, let them meander up at their own rate. They just take their time so they can watch where they place their feet. They minimise the risk of hoof damage. When they get into the yard, again, don't force them anywhere. Don't get into the yard and make them turn around. Minimise the amount of uh, twisting and turning that takes place. With respect to the environment, the track, yes, tracks can be difficult to maintain but important to keep the track in as good condition as you can, keep it dry, keep it well drained in particular, and the bearing surface should not contain too many stones that are hard on the cow's feet. With respect to the concrete yard, try and set up systems whereby stones are not carried in onto the concrete, and in the shed behind me you'll see rubber matting where the cows go in and go off. This has reduced the incidence of lameness considerably. By taking these steps of careful management of the cows, 
um, by having good tracks uh, and early treatment of any cases that occur, the, the problem associated with lameness in such herds as mine are very much reduced. Key point, prevention is better than treatment when it comes to lameness.